Hello everybody, and today we're going to be doing two separate effects. First of all, we're going to be making a high key image. Now that's an image where you're still going to get the darker areas, but overall it's a light image. After we've done that, we're going to come in and we're going to turn this into an old 1950s, 1960s Polaroid style effect. Okay, let's get started. First of all, right click and duplicate our layer. We're going to call this one base. Now, just to start off with, I want to come to my effects browser, color adjustments, come to levels, and just make it a little bit darker and a little bit lighter in areas. There we go, so we've got some more values to work with. Second thing, I'll crop it from now because I've got that person's face in, reflected in that window. I don't really want that. I want to concentrate on the little boy. Come to my crop tool, come up to the top left, hold down shift because I want a square image to start off with. And I'm going to place this down to about there. And then I'm going to make it just a little bit longer. We'll come to Y in a little bit. And click on Enter. OK, there's my picture to work with. OK, very last thing before we start, I'll just make this a little bit larger so we can see more clearly what we're doing. So magnifying glass, zoom to fit. There we go. Next thing, duplicate the layer again. Now we're going to be doing something wonderful with this. First of all, we're going to come to our effects browser and we're going to come down to other. Scroll down until you find this little black and white icon, mask to alpha. I'm going to take that. I'm going to drop it on there. OK, now what's that actually done? I'll show you. I'll create another layer here and I'm going to fill this. And I'm going to fill it with a nice deep red color. What's happened to this layer is wherever it was light, it's more or less opaque. Wherever it's darker, it's become more transparent. If I clear everything underneath it, you can see those little gray and white squares. That's completely transparent or relatively transparent. If I put the red layer back in, that's starting to show through. Let's just make all the layers visible again. All right, a couple of bits of housekeeping. We don't actually need this red layer anymore, so let's get rid of that. And also, I'm going to take this base layer, duplicate it, and we're going to call this effect. So I've got two layers exactly the same on top of each other. Reason why it will become apparent in just a little bit. So what we want is a layer mask, but also we want this base copy layer into the layer mask as well. I'll show you how to do that. So we come up to our base copy layer. We come to Edit, Load Selection. You can see the marching ants. That's all been loaded as a selection. Then we come to the layer that we want the effect to go to. Now, don't click on it. Instead, press Control, hover over it, and right click, and then Add Mask. See what's happening here? We've got a layer mask there, but we've got that base copy image pasted into it. The last thing before we get started in earnest, Come back, make sure that's not selected. You can see the blue halo means it's selected. Click on the layer to make sure it's selected, not the layer mask. And Control D to deselect everything. And finally, we don't need this base copy there. Let's just make that invisible. So, so far, not much difference. But now, if we come back, color adjustments, click on levels, bring it in. If I start making that image a lot lighter, you can see the lighter areas are getting lighter, but the darker areas are staying pretty much the same. Take it about there. That layer mask that we're looking at right now, that's having an effect on this. Those darker areas mean that this layer isn't showing through so much. It means this layer underneath is showing through more, and that's the layer we didn't affect. So if it was dark in this layer, it'll stay dark because You've got this mask here, but the lighter areas are getting lighter because of this layer mask. Remember, with a layer mask, the lighter it is, the more of this layer is going to show through. That's how you can do a high key image and you've got a lot of control over it as before. You can rank it down to zero. You can bring it up back up as much as you want. All right, now let's take it a little bit further. OK, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. We don't need this base copy there anymore, so let's just delete that. 
All right, now the thing about an old color photograph is over time, the colors get faded. The dyes that we use to make them start to fade at different levels. So you start to get cyans coming out in certain areas, the yellows coming out in other areas. You get this mismatch of colors. They also get quite blotchy as well. All right, so come to our base layer. I'm going to add some curves to this. Now this is the shadow area. I want more blues in the shadow area. In general, I want it to be less contrasty because pictures fade over time. So that's more contrasty. Now I'm going to come to my blues. I want the shadow areas to be more blue, less so in the upper areas. And I want the reds and the greens to come down on this particular layer. And OK that. Then I'm going to come up to this layer here and I'm going to put some curves on here. Now I want the yellows to be more predominant for here. So that's going to be using light, red and green get hooked up so you get a more yellow effect. A slightly more. And a little bit more here. OK that. All right, next thing I want to do, I'm going to make a new layer. Make a new layer. Now for this one, I'm going to I'm going to select all. Now you can see there's a rectangle covering the whole area. I'm going to come to edit, refine selection. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the size slightly smaller. You can see here I'm starting to get a border around there. About there. Clicking OK, there's my marching out. And then I'm going to come back to my rectangular selection, hold down shift, and make the bottom area slightly larger. Whoops, did it the wrong way around. Hold down Alt to minus from this area. You used to get a border around Polaroids, but the bottom was always larger because that was the bit that you used to peel off the chemicals from, so you needed more space for your fingers to be there. So come to Edit, Invert Selection, because we want to fill the outside, not the inside. Then back to Edit, Fill, and we want this to be a nice white color. And click on OK. There's our border control D to deselect. You can't see it very clearly because there's so much white surrounding it, but it's there. Next thing, apply another layer on there. We'll call this clouds. And then we want to come down to generator clouds. Now for the primary color, I want that to be a cyan color, which is green and blue mixed together. Secondary color, no, I can leave that as black. Then come down to either overlay or soft light. Overlay, can you see that? You're getting this slightly blotchy image. It's looking a bit overpowering at the moment. Let's take it down to zero and start to bring it back up again. Now you're starting to get this really kind of blotchy effect there, like that. And that is starting to look much, much more like those kind of faded, blotchy things that you get. Let's try that with soft light. That's giving a more subtle effect, which I must admit, I do quite like. I'm trying to sell the idea of it being a Polaroid photograph from the 1950s, but don't want to go over the top. All right, there's a couple of more things I want to do. A little bit of housekeeping. Frame, and I want to put that right at the top. Now, let's come to this base layer. And now I want to come down to Stylize. Bring it down, and we want Light Leak. Let's bring it over here. Now, can you see there, it's giving the effect of light leaking through the camera, which we would tend to get on a really cheap Polaroid style camera. Let's see what different styles we've got. I'm more interested in it providing a little bit more detail and definition in this area down here, which is frankly just a little bit too light. Sunniness, let's crank that up, get a strong effect. Move around, have a little play with it, see what we can do with it. Not sure that one's going to work. Let's try this one. Taurus, yeah, that's giving a fairly nice big effect. Let's move that a bit out of the way, though, first. So you're getting slightly blotched there. You're also getting just a little bit of it down in this area here. And click on OK for that. All right, if you want it more realistic than that, and this is what you do. You go back in time, about 50 odd years, take a photograph, 
leave it somewhere lying around, come back, pick it up today, okay? Simple. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.